Uh, hello learners, welcome to this session on international tourism. Uh, see, there are two main types of tourism. One is international tourism and another is domestic tourism. When travel for tourism, it involves uh, crossing a national border or um, say, uh, say, yeah, when we, it involves crossing a national border, then we refer to it as uh, international tourism. Whereas when travel and tourism activities of a tourist, they are within the boundary of, the, of, his, of his or her own country, then we term it as domestic tourism. Now the focus of this particular session, it is on the international tourism. So after this session, uh, you would be able to know about the major tourism markets of the world. Uh, you should be able to also to know about India's share in tourism, uh, world tourism scenario. Then uh, we would be knowing the major tourist generating markets for India. And then we, we, you should be able to appreciate the need for tapping new markets for increasing the market, the market share. According to the Ministry of Tourism, Government of India, an international visitor is any person visiting the country on a foreign passport and the main purpose of the visit is other than the exercise of an activity remunerated from within the country or establishment of residence in that country. Uh, it means when the person is coming not for job opportunity or for employment purpose. So if you look at this definition, there are two segments of visitors which are covered. One is the foreign tourists who stay at least for 24 hours in India and the purpose of whose journey can be classified into any one of the following whether it is for leisure, recreation, health purpose, for studying purpose, holiday, religion, business, visiting your family, then the attending meeting purposes etc. And the following uh, three categories they are not regarded as tourists by the Ministry of Tourism one is person arriving with or without a contract to take up an occupation or engage in activities remunerated from within the country. That means a person who is coming for employment opportunities. Then a person coming to establish residence in the country. If the person is coming to, the, to India for permanent residency, then he is also not considered as a tourist. And persons who, who come as excursionists, we would all like to see what excursionist is. This is the second type of visitors. So an excursionist is a visitor who stays less than 24 hours in the country. For example, there are visitors who um, arrive in a country by cruise ships, like crew passengers. The, they are going on a crew uh, uh, journey and they docked in one of the uh, seaports in, uh, say, in India and they do not stay their accommodation is in the ship only but they get to sightsee a destination and then to go back so they do not spend a night at an accommodation establishment in the country so we consider them as an excursionist and since the year 2014 when the Ministry of Tourism they tabulate or they collect the information or the statistics of the number of international tourists coming to India, they have started including the non residence Indian or the NRIs. Previously, uh, they were counting only the foreign tourists. Now, international, when you talk about international tourists, we talk about the foreign tourists who are not uh, the citizens of India, and another is the non resident Indian or the NRIs. Now, who is an NRI? An NRI or a non resident Indian is an Indian citizen who resides in India for less than 182 days during the course of the the preceding financial year or who has gone out of India or who stays outside India for the purpose of employment or who has gone out of India or who stays outside India for carrying on business or vocation outside India and one who has gone out of India or who stays outside India for any other purpose indicating his intentions to stay out outside India for an uncertain period of time then that person is defined as an NRI well, the international tourism, again, if you, uh, uh, there are two forms. One is the inbound tourism and another is the outbound tourism. 
Now, inbound tourism is the act of entering a destination or we call it as the tourist receiving uh, country by the non-residents for a specific period of time. The reasons may be varied, for, but those should be non-remunerating purposes. Uh, for example, a tourist uh, from the United States uh, comes to India, then we consider him as an inbound uh, tourist and this type of tourism we call it as inbound tourism. Outbound tourism comprises of travel from country of origin to another country, here from the tourist generating country to the tourist receiving country or the tourist destination that the tourist is visiting for a specified period of time. The reason again would be the purpose of a visit would be varied again, whether it is for leisure, business or other non-renumerative purposes. For example, if an Indian uh, resident travelled to France, then he is an example of outbound tourist uh, tourism for India. and. At the same time, for France, he will be an inbound tourist. So, uh, for, uh, in the context of India, he will uh, the Indian is the India the outbound tourist, whereas for France, he is an inbound tourist. Taking into consideration the above example, uh, one should understand that while a tourist from France who is also a resident of France visits India, he or she is considered outbound tourist by France, while the same tourist is termed as inbound tourist in India. But if the tourist was not residing in France, he may be a French citizen, but he is not residing in France and he has come to India from say another country, USA, then he would not be considered as an outbound tourist by France because his country of origin at that time is not France, even if he is a French national, he has went from France to USA and from USA uh, he has uh, come to India. So there in that case France will not consider him as an outbound tourist to India. Now another term which we can uh, explain in relation to international tourism is the intra-regional tourism which involves travel by person within the geographical uh, boundary of the region to which uh, his or her country belong. So if a tourist from Europe travels within Europe itself, that is within the same region, then he or she becomes an intra-regional uh, tourist for that particular reason. The UNWTO, that means the World uh, United Nations World Tourism Organization recognizes five tourism reasons in the world. One is the Americas, uh, Europe, uh, Asia and Pacific, Africa and Middle East. When we talk about the whole uh, the Americas, we are referring both to the countries in the North American and the South American continent. Europe, the whole of Europe, so France is there, UK is there, Spain, Portugal. So all these countries, they, are, uh, they come under the European region. Asia and Pacific, India, India comes in, India is part of the Asia Pacific. And even in Asia Pacific also, they have sub uh, reasons. So each of these five reason, major region, they are also divided into sub regions. Then Africa, then the Middle East are the remaining two. Uh, what would you call the major reason which have been identified by the United Nations, uh, World WTO? Then. Why do we need the definition of these various terms is that we need them for identifying the markets or tourism generating reason and also for data collection. Now the statistics regarding uh, world uh, tourism movements like arrivals, departures, tourism receipts, uh, expenditures, they are collected from various bulletins and publications of uh, uh, prominent international organizations like uh, well, uh, UNWTO is one of them. And uh, in, uh, if you talk about the Ministry of Tourism, they have a market research division, which also collects data and compiles them in the form of tourism statistics annually. Uh, in India, the uh, arrival statistics, they are compiled from the disembarkation card, which are filled in by the foreign uh, tourists at the time of their entry into India. And the point of entry may be an airport, the seaport or the land check, uh, the checkpoint post in uh, when they are traveling by land uh, through land routes. Now, data, is, uh, data are very helpful in profiling the tourists for the purpose of marketing. From this data, we get to know how many tourists from which country visit India in which year and based on that, our marketing strategy can be planned. 
Then we would also know how many of these were women or how many of them were men and to which age group they belong. But when you talk about the motivation and the type of services expected by them, we need to do a specific surveys. When they come by, um, when they fill in the, the, the disembarkation form, usually the motives of travel, maybe the purpose of travel is there, but uh, we, we give them general information. So when we want to go for specific motives of travel, if uh, a tour operator, uh, say an adventure tour operator, uh, wants to know the type of uh, tourist that he has to target then he has to go or he has to look for certain survey results or certain survey reports where which uh, specifically talk about his line of work that is the adventure sports so certain uh, specific surveys needs to be conducted if we need to look into the motive of travel so generally when we talk about motives of travel by foreign tourists coming to India, they are performed by the uh, tourism offices of the Ministry of Tourism. And uh, these offices, along with uh, carrying out uh, this uh, type of uh, surveys, they also carry out the promotional campaigns like they advertise uh, and they do the image building exercises for India. Uh, let us now discuss uh, what, what are the tourism markets for India. So a variety of factors determines the flow of tourists. Sound economy, then surplus income. Tourism is a leisure activity. So if you have surplus income, then only then will you be able to partake in tourism activities because the basic uh, necessity of life needs to be first uh, fulfilled, then only the leisure activity comes. So you need to have surplus income, which we also call as the discretionary income. Then the number of holidays and vacations, political uh, conditions and travel advisories by government are some other factors to be taken care of in this regard. So an analysis of the data available, it shows that traditionally the major tourist generating countries in the world have always been the developed countries. But today, all destinations, they are in intense competition with each other to get a larger share in the market. So knowing the activity level of the various uh, tourism reasons, the top tourist destination, both in terms of tourist arrivals, revenue earned and top tourist spenders in the world will be beneficial. Now this will give uh, marketers and promoters of a destination a benchmark for comparative studies of tourist statistics. For example, uh, by studying the reason why distribution of tourists, uh, world's tourist arrivals and revenue earned, the marketers of upcoming destinations like uh, say India, they will be able to find out the overall global tourism traffic and its accompanying monetary implications. Now this information when you combine it with other information like the inflow of international tourists to South Asia. Now, South Asia is a sub-region of the Asia-Pacific region to which India belongs. And if you know the actual and the forecasted tourist arrivals to India from the various countries, the level of tourism development in the country, carrying capacity, etc. Then all this combined information, they will help the uh, marketer or the promoter to narrow down specific potential tourism market segment that can be targeted and if you look at uh, the history of or the inflow of tourist uh, arrivals uh, international tourist arrivals uh, down the years despite occasional uh, shock uh, the international arrivals have uh, virtually uh, shown uninterrupted growth from about 25 million in uh, way back in 1990 to say 278 million in 1980 to 528 million in 1995 and crossing the 1 billion mark for the first time ever in 2012. So the figure for the total international tourist arrival worldwide in 2019 is a staggering 1460 million so apart from the traditional favorites of europe and uh, north american region the middle east and the asia and pacific region they have also shown a lot of continued growth rate 
As per UNWTO International Tourist Arrival Statistics in 2018 and 2019, Europe welcomed 51% of the world's visitors, followed by the Asia and Pacific region, which accounts for 25%, and the Americas region for about 15%. Now, as far as the purpose of travel is concerned, 56% of the world visitors have leisure, recreation and holidays as its main purpose, while a significant 27% of the visitors travel, uh, they travel for visiting friends and relatives, health, religion and other purposes. The business and the professional visitors, they accounted for about 13% of the total world visitors. And in terms of mode of transportation use, the international travel have heavily relied on the air transportation, like 58%, followed by roadways at 37%, waterways at 4% and uh, travel by ra uh, railway lines at 2%. So an important question arises here is, where does India stand in this total world tourism arrival statistics or the scenario that we have just uh, talked about. Well, let us compare the figure based on the latest statistics provided by the Ministry of Tourism Government of India for the year 2019. If you see the world tourist arrivals, the total world tourist arrivals in 2019, we say it is 1,460 million. Among uh, out of this, the total tourist arrivals in India is 17.91 million. That means out of 1,460 million, 17.91 million visited India. So the percentage share of India is 1.23% and India's rank in the world's tourist arrival is 23rd. However, when you look at the foreign exchange receipt, the percentage of India is much higher than that of arrival and this is a very good uh, figure. The world tourism receipt, we are talking about the whole world, in 2019 was 4,431 US dollar, 4,431 billion US dollar. And the estimated foreign exchange receipt of India was 30.05 billion US dollar. So which takes the percentage of uh, share of India to 2.03%. And India's rank in the world tourism receipt is 12th. That means 12th rank. So in India in 2019, it welcomed 17.91 million international tourists ranking as the 8th most visited country in Asia and the 23rd most visited destination in the world. So this indicates that in spite of a lower share in arrivals, the tourists spend more in India and the average length of stay as per the International Passenger Survey is about 16 days. So this is an encouraging trend because many of India's competitors like Singapore, Malaysia, Thailand, etc. They receive a much bigger share in arrival. That means more tourists visit them. But if you compare with, uh, as compared to India, more tourists visit this destination, but with a, leisure, a lesser length of stay. So the number of days which they stay in this uh, competitive destination, uh, if, uh, if you compare it with the number of days that the tourists stay in uh, India, it is much more in India. Uh, for uh, updating uh, the data, uh, you should always refer to the website of organization like the UNWTO and the Ministry of Tourism because they keep on updating the data every year and tourism statistics, it keeps on changing. See, for a good marketer, it is essential to know where the tourists are likely to go. So this will give them a clear picture about the status where a particular destination stands in the overall ranking and what needs to be done to improve their chances of attracting more tourists. There are two key indicators which should be taken into account while determining the, uh, the world's top tourist destination. Um, it is always common practice and, um, and uh, an accepted norm to base the rankings solely on the number of tourist arrivals. But uh, it is equally important 
and sometimes more important to consider the tourism receipts of a destinations while ranking them. Uh, if you look at this figure, you will notice that out of the top 10 countries, five of them, namely France, Spain, Italy, Germany and the United Kingdom, they are in Europe and they have a combined footfall of around 309 million tourists. Again, Turkey is a country which bridges Europe with the Middle East. So we can say Europe is the most visited tourism region in the world. Now, apart from Europe being the top destination or the most visited region, it is also the reason which generates the most visitors accounting for about 48% of the total outbound uh, visitors worldwide. So it is the most receiving uh, tourist receiving reason as well as the tourist generating reason worldwide. Asia and the Pacific reason, it generates about 26% of the world tourists followed by the Americas at 17%, the Middle East at 3% and, um, and uh, Africa also at 3%. Now again, since the underlying motive behind every destination's effort to promote tourism is the revenue it generates. Therefore, it is very important that not only the number of arrivals which matters, the amount of money tourists spend during their stay in a country also matters. Now, one area where destination promoters should emphasize upon is therefore the current trains and international tourism receipts and expenditures. So in this regard, knowing the world's top revenue earners and spenders in tourism will be important. USA records the maximum revenue, followed by France and Spain. If we look at the top spenders on tourism, China, accounts for the world's largest spender on tourism recording 277 billion US dollar they spent on the tourism activities and uh, this is a for China is followed by the United States of America Germany and the United Kingdom so overall you have a rough or a, a broad picture of the type of um, the countries where tourism receipts or the tourism uh, number of tourist arrivals uh, or the prominent tourism destinations in the world is there. And when we talk about prominent tourism destinations, like I said, we are not focusing only on the number of tourist arrivals. We are also focusing on how much a country earns or how much a country uh, expends when they go to uh, another destination. Now let us look at the market for uh, India. When you talk about India in terms of attraction, it is a destination with a very strong tourism product. We have culture, we have history, architecture, beaches, mountains, religion, ethnicity, you name anything. And traditionally, all this have been the pull factor for international tourists to India. Yet, infrastructure wise, there have been certain weaknesses which makes it less attractive or less accessible. So the, we have lack of international number of international airport, the huge size of the country, lack of hotel rooms, quality hotel rooms, standardized hotel rooms or the star category hotel rooms are some of the examples where India is lacking. And because India is also a long haul destination from the major tourist, uh, tourist generating markets of the world, this is also another uh, drawback for us. And when we talk about major tourism, uh, major tourist generation generating markets uh, yes, as you have seen before those uh, the major tourist market uh, generating markets are from the European and the American region which is a long haul destination or at a long distance from India long distance means more uh, money would be required by the tourists to visit India so this is one drawback so only the high income group of people will be able to come to India now in spite of all these weaknesses India has crossed the 17th million mark of tourist arrivals in the year 2018. Now, it has been a long journey of slow and steady progress from a little under 17,000. See, 17,000 tourist arrivals way back in 1951 to welcoming the first million in, 2000, in 1990 and eventually the 17th million in 2018. Now, identification and the study of uh, the uh, tourist generating markets for India is determined by assessing the tourist arrivals from different countries. 
So the foreign tourist arrivals or the FTA in India have been increasing from all reasons. The growth was maximum from Africa, surprisingly, at 10.4% followed by Central and South America uh, at 9.8%, East Asia at 9.2%, Southeast Asia at 7.6%, then uh, Australasia is there, North America, South Asia and the Western Europe. This, uh, all these are sub reason within the broader re five reasons that would have been identified by the UNWTO. So the percentage which is shown uh, in the foreign tourist arrivals in India during uh, the year 2018, the highest was for South Africa at 29.440% uh, followed by Western Europe then North America, Southeast Asia, East Asia, Eastern Europe, West Asia, Australasia and so on. So international visitors to India have uh, predominantly the travels with the purpose of leisure, holiday and recreation accounting to 57.1% of the total arrivals. The business and professional purpose it ranks uh, second with 14.7% and uh, there were about 12.7% Indian diaspora visitors and about 4.6% uh, 4 have visited for the medical purposes. As far as the most frequented uh, entry points to India is concerned, uh, Delhi, Mumbai, Bangalore, Chennai and uh, Goa are the entry points. Uh, Delhi, as you know, is the capital of India. So Mumbai is the business capital of India. Bangalore, the IT capital of India. Chennai in the south and Goa is uh, one of the most famous uh, destination of India. So it is natural that these are the most frequented entry points when foreign tourists come to India. So India attracts visitors from all across the globe, but we also need to know which are the most specific countries where the tourists are coming from. Bangladesh being our neighbor country, they have generated a lot of visitors. They are in the number one position of tourist generating country to India accounting for 23.58% uh, of the total visitors to India followed by the United Nations, the United Kingdom, then Australia, Canada, China, the mainland China, I'm talking about then Malaysia is there, Sri Lanka, Germany, Russian Federation. So these are the top 10 uh, tourist generating source country for uh, India. Then UK uh, used to be number one, but it still continues to generate a large number of tourists for India, partly because of the historical connection between the two countries and partly because a sizable portion of the population of Indian origin that still lives in the UK. Let us now look at uh, another important uh, area uh, that is the Indian outbound because outbound is also part of the international uh, tourism uh, definition that we have defined before. Now India has been ascertained to be one of the fastest growing outbound travel markets in the world and this is uh, fueled mainly by the huge population as well as the strong economy. Even if you have a huge population, if you do not have a surplus amount of income, the people do not have surplus amount of income, then uh, uh, tourism will not take place, especially outbound tourism will not take place. So. The strong economy, uh, the strong Indian economy is an important factor which has uh, fueled the outbound tourism. And the increase in the number of younger, more educated uh, population who have a greater will for travel, for experimenting new destinations. And uh, there is the, uh, uh, so many of the companies in India now they have a provision for paid leaves. Now, all these are good indicators for a strong growth for outbound tourism from India. Then India's outbound market, it has gradually increased from 4.5 million departures in 2001 to a massive 26.9 million departures in 2019. So in a matter of just 19 years, the jump has been dramatic. If you look at the figure, then you would know where the Indian foreign tourists and they have gone abroad. We have given you the figures from 1991 through 2000 and 2000, 2019. Now, 
Again, Indians are exploring uh, more new reasons than ever. Majority of the outbound uh, visitors that travel uh, regionally and hence Middle East, 36% and Asia, 34% records more visitation from India. UAE and, the, and Saudi Arabia have been the most popular destination in the Middle East. Thailand, Singapore and Malaysia are uh, the most visited destination by Indians in Asia as per the records in 2019. The third most preferred reason for, for outbound travel from India has been the traditional favorites of Europe at 17%, America at 9% and Africa at 5%. So if you look at these uh, uh, figures, then you have a rough idea of where Indians are going abroad, which reasons they are going in terms of percentage it is also given. So you have a, uh, an idea where the Indians travel when they go out for, uh, for holidays from India. Let us now look at some of the factors which uh, affect the growth of Indian outbound tourism. We have already talked about the huge population and the uh, impressive economic growth of the country. Now, the emergence of the great Indian middle class is another factor which accounts for it. Then substantial uh, disposable income, the liberalization of the country's civil aviation policies. Before 1990, it was uh, state regulated policies. Now with the open sky policy, we have a number of budget airlines coming in the, into play and this budget airlines, they, what, they are one of the main reasons why when it comes to increasing the number of uh, outbound tourism from India. Then the liberalization of the exchange control because what you can take out uh, from the country the amount of money and how much you can bring in all this exchange control also have a lot of uh, uh, impact on the number of uh, outbound tourists going out of India so because of the liberalization of the exchange process the number of uh, in outbounds have also increased then considerable like we have already talked about this considerable increase in the number of airlines and flight connectivity if you have to go to certain reason obviously the accessibility or the connectivity is a very important and when we talk about flight connectivity we have a number of airlines both foreign and indian airlines private and public air airlines uh, in the picture now so, and uh, we have uh, then the liberalization of policies for issue of travel documentation then bilateral visa arrangement with a number of countries India have entered. So this also helps in the number of uh, both number of inbound and outbound uh, tourist movement. Then relaxation in foreign exchange regulations, uh, greater awareness about destination due to aggressive marketing. If you looked into the incredible India campaign, uh, then we have a lot of uh, promotional activities being done by the Ministry of Tourism. So this also helped in uh, giving out a very good uh, positive image about India as a destination. So the promotional activities really do help. Then the increased access to information, the proliferation of advanced IT tools like the internet, then the online booking facilities, the opening up of new destination as a result of the new um, Indian travelers readiness to experiment with the choices available. So all this are certain factors which can be attributed to the growth of the outbound tourism from, in, from India. Now, many a times we can also see that the holiday financing schemes by various banks and other financial institutions and even the tour oper big tour operators themselves, they, you, can, uh, you can avail the holiday and then uh, give, make your payments in terms of small monthly installments. So all these factors, they really help in the outbound uh, tourism movement. Now let us sum up what we have uh, discussed so far in this session. We have talked about the major tourism markets of the world. Uh, like if you look at the UN uh, WTO's division, there are five uh, major reasons which we have uh, classified the whole world into. The Americas is there, Europe is there, Asia and Africa, Asia, Asia and the Pacific. Uh, then we have uh, Middle East and we have Africa. So these are the five major tourism uh, markets of the world. Then India's share, you have uh, also uh, 
we have also discussed where India is 23rd in terms of tourist arrivals whereas in terms of revenue generation it is ranked 12th in the whole uh, world and uh, we talked about the major tourist generating markets for India Bangladesh is the top uh, tourist generating country for India and followed by uh, USA and UK then we have also seen a, a few points on the, how the outbound tourism from India has really uh, taken a big leap of growth in the last few years uh, and the major reasons we have already identified one being the strong economy that India has as well as the um, number of increasing sites of the Indian middle class as well as the, the other provisions of uh, connectivity and uh, IT tools which also helps and uh, make the world a more accessible place. So uh, thank you so much for this session. We will talk about other aspects in uh, uh, other remaining sessions of this course.